الله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي You guys today we have another remarkable individual with us another young person from our community and that is of course Abdul Rahman Abdul Rahim yeah. you know, I don't know why I'm picturing this bro I gotta just lay it out for you I feel like when you were born um, your family was like split half of the family is like it's Abdul Rahman the other half is like it's Abdul Rahim and finally <laughs> as the birth certificate hangs in balance some sagely figure in the family they're like you know let's unite the family bring both together Abdul Rahman Abdul Rahim and here we are <laughs> <laughs> Kind of, kind of what like that. <laughs> Inshallah. But, but, um, but I'm sure when you move to America, with all the fanfare that has gone into your name, when you finally move to America, it was unceremoniously reduced to just Abdul. Yep, Abdul. And then for the last name, Rahim. <laughs> <laughs> Subhanallah, man. And mashallah, I, I, if you guys didn't already catch, he's in the third year of his med school education at MCW, Milwaukee College of Wisconsin. Mashallah. Apparently, from what you're saying, the third year, it gets a little easier, huh? Yeah, definitely um, gets more hands-on experience. Yeah, and... that's awesome, man, because I hear, like, horror stories, especially in the first two years. Like, you need meds just to get through med school, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Mashallah. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you made it through the, you made it out of the blues. And, uh, folks, if you don't know, Abdurrahman is, Mashallah, an OG of our coach leadership team. So when we started our mega series, especially Untold Stories of Sacrifice, remember Blal and you... You guys came on right. board and uh, he was part of our original coaching team. Mashallah, may Allah reward you for everything you've done. Thank you for coming on today. And I'm really excited to have this session. Now, I hope you've seen one of these sessions before and kind of blah, brought you up to speed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You I've did? Uh, tuned in before and stuff and nice, talked to nice. nice. Alhamdulillah. So today, inshallah, we're starting Hadith 220. And this Hadith was brought to us by Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, rahimahullah, whose life we covered. He passed away in the year 32 Hijri. This hadith that he brings to us, there are four questions being asked in this hadith to the Prophet And my goal today is to at least cover the first two questions, and then inshallah we'll tackle the remaining two questions in a future session. So, a man comes to the Prophet and he says, Ya Rasulullah, Ayyul A'mali Khair. Translation, the man asked the Prophet Ya Rasulullah, which action is the best? Which action, which deed, if you will, which good deed is the most virtuous that's going to give me the most bang for my buck in terms of reward? And the Prophet ﷺ, before I share with you his response, it's something really interesting, Abdul Rahman, is that if you look at the hadith literature, this particular question, which deed is the best, which action is the best, it comes up a lot in the hadith literature where different people are coming to the Prophet ﷺ. And they're asking about essentially the same question, like, which, uh, give me the goat stuff. Give me the cream of the crop. Right. Ya Rasulullah. And people from different zip codes, different towns are coming and asking the same question. And yet the Prophet Wasallam, you would think, would give the same response. Because if you're asking about the mm -hmm. top, like, top list, you think it'd be cut and dry, would be the same. And since the question is the same, the response would be the same. Yet what we find is the Prophet Wasallam is giving different responses to different individuals. I want to ask you and also the audience, why? Why is um, it as changing when the question I mean, is I, th I think that's a very good point. Because um, you would think it would be very clear cut. It's this. This is the number yeah. one. This is the goal. Yeah, this like is, Hajj. Uh, just uh, tell everybody to do Hajj, you know, and there you go. Your right. sins are forgiven. Great. But he gives a different song. What do you think? I wanted to ask you, get your thoughts on it. Yeah, I think uh, it really shows like the the mercy the, the the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how mm. really and in how what gracious way? How, how does it show mercy in your eyes cuz not everyone's circumstances and not everyone's uh ability to do good is necessarily the same profound um, yes so for you to say this is the only thing that is the best i don't think that's fair for the majority mm. of the people so subhanahu wa ta'ala i think Allah's you know very like gracious to say you know depending on your situation this is the best you can do yeah uh, or this is the best deed for you Mashallah. or there's many things that we could do that would be considered that we'd get rewarded as uh, being one of the best things we can do absolutely absolutely and subhanallah feel free to by the way if you see any comments that you want to kind of read out loud like here we have Amr saying depending upon the situation of the sahabas 
the Prophet would give different responses, maybe yes. based on their own good deeds. And you know, here's something we learned something beautiful, profound about our deen, and that is you guys, that our deen, Islam, can at once be universal and at once can be tailor made and customized just for you. Right. And that's profound because at once it caters to humanity's macro needs, but at once it can become your specific spiritual prescription. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ is demonstrating this by varying and changing his fatwa based on who's asking for the fatwa. It's profound. It's amazing because different strokes for different folks. And that's right. why you have somebody coming to the Prophet ﷺ and say, Ya Rasulullah, give me some dope advice. And the Prophet is like, don't get angry. He's like, yeah, slow. okay, I get that. Like, okay, I've heard that before. But something else, so it's like, don't get angry. Don't get angry. And the person's getting upset because he's getting the same answer. And the Prophet is like, yeah, that's the point. Don't get angry. <laughs> you know, another person came to the Prophet Hadith comes in Sahih Muslim, Ya Rasulullah, give me an advice that I don't need any other advice after it. The Prophet is like, believe in Allah and then say, then stay steadfast and consistent. Another person, Ya Rasulullah, what Islam, whose, whose Islamic deeds are the best? The Prophet is like, feed poor people. Say salam to the people you know and you don't know. Perhaps those people were struggling with tribal, tribal rivalries and ethnic strife. So that was the best deed for those people. As the anger control was the best thing for that person. So based on your circumstances and struggles, something had become your best deed. I think that's the organic humanity that is built into our deen but i wanted to make sure you all appreciate it yeah that's a, that's that's beautiful subhanahu yeah feel free to uh react and uh, share your reactions uh whenever you if something strikes a chord with you now this was the first question the prophet sallallahu was asked and one second that was ya rasulullah what action is the best now, Abdul Rahman, i just want you to focus on the question notice what he's asking what action is the best he's asking about a deed a verb, mm -hmm. an action. The Prophet ﷺ responds by saying, Imanum Billah. Having Iman in Allah. Now, to, I don't know if you're feeling what I'm feeling, but let, let me break this down for you. How do we normally translate Iman, Abdul Rahman? Usually, we talk about Iman as something internal. Mm -hmm. something, um, like What's an the intention, usual English translation that you, we, we typically hear? Belief. Belief. Faith. Faith, conviction, that's, those are the three words that are usually thrown around. And normally speaking, when you think of faith, at a surface level, you're thinking of some theoretical thing in your head or like some concept in your heart that you're holding. And that's, that's, that's about it. It's like a thing that you hold inside of you. And that's about it. Here, the problem is doing a paradigm shift. The person asks, what is the single best action? And the problem is like Iman in Allah, as if he's saying Iman and action are synonymous. Iman and actions are twins. You never separate the two. And that is something very important for us Muslims to understand that Iman for us is not lip service, yo. Iman is not just a slogan. I I Iman is not you doing online virtue signaling and just a, um, just a thing you just roll around with. Right. Uh, you know, you know, there's a hadith that comes in Musnad of Imam Ahmad and Musnad of Al-Hakim, which is one of my favorite hadith. A man comes to the Prophet and he's like, Ya Rasulullah, I'm ready to become a Muslim. I'm ready for Iman. Uh, so the Prophet began to kind of enumerate for him what Iman entails. You know, you got to get your five pillars down and so on and so forth. And the Prophet is mm -hmm. telling him the duties that come in the full package of Iman. And now this person starts... Um, Starts picking and choosing, if you will. He's like, yeah, there's a lot of charity. I work really hard in med school to earn my money. I don't know if I want to just part way that easily. It's not, I don't know if it's my cup of tea. And then he's like, jihad? Like, I got to, like, inconvenience myself? <laughs> like, I got to be, be willing to bear arms if it comes to it? I, is it, I don't know if I'm that serious. <laughs> like, I don't know if I'm ready for that kind of commitment. <laughs> so the Prophet ﷺ said, فَبِمَ تَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ إِذَنْ Oh, do you want to enter Jannah for free? You, know, you just want to cruise control your way to paradise without actually putting the effort? And, and don't you see this, bro? Like, to graduate med school, people are busting their chops, studying, like you said, eight hours a day, 
quarter million dollar worth of debt. But when it comes to doing things to graduate in the hereafter, this is where you hear things like, well, I don't, I don't know if I'm really there yet. I'm still like dabbling. Right. You know? Again, I'm not trying to be facetious, man, but like the contrast is jarring when it comes to the kind of effort that goes for the hereafter versus the kind of effort that goes for this world. All I'm saying, y'all, we can no longer afford to have Iman with flat tires. You know, you feel me, bro? Right. Like, Iman has to be like validated through action. And that's why when the Prophet is asked this question, let me now give you the full response of the Prophet He's asked what action is the best? The Prophet says, Iman in Allah, and then struggling in his path. Struggling in his path. Meaning, in learning to kind of inconvenience yourself time to time for God. That speak louder, loud, loud, one action speaks louder than a thousand words. Time to time, resisting your desires for Allah, getting out of your comfort zone for Allah. That's what breathes life to your claim of Iman. So now here, I'm going to share a few examples of how beautiful Iman looks when it's adorned with actions. And you feel free to share your examples, sure. what you've seen from your family, from inshallah, even from yourself or others. Iman is when, subhanAllah, you tell the truth on your resume, even if it hurts your job prospects. Iman is to turn down an amazing investment opportunity because all the financing options are haram. You could be a real estate tycoon, but you are not because you're like, I don't want to go down the road of riba. Iman is to restrain your tongue from blurting out cuss words, even if you're angry. To Iman is to hold yourself back from sliding into her DM. Iman is to do the right thing even when no one's supervising you, even if boss is not at work. Yo, Iman is to not park in somebody's handicapped spot when you know you don't deserve it. Yo, that's what makes Iman beautiful, man. Yeah, oh, I definitely any, agree. Yeah. Wow. Any any thoughts or, I don't know, if it, that, that jogged your memory in terms of... Yeah, so people? definitely, like, I think part of the people, like you said, initially you hear Iman, you think it's something internal and part of it is but, Theoretically. Right, right. But in the end, it's how you live your actions and how you live, how you present yourself with other people, with what you do, with integrity. I think that's part of the huge thing. If you're an honest person with integrity yeah, so throughout well, whatever you do. If you just do it honestly and with integrity and for the sake of Allah, I think that's uh, definitely falls with it. That's um, you expressing your amen. Man, I, in Core Academy, we were discussing the concept of Iman in a lot more depth. And I was sharing with my students there to think of Iman as like a seed in the ground. And if, the, if you have the proper seed planted properly, naturally, naturally it gives birth to branches and fruits and flowers. You know, so a proof right. that the seed is in the ground is that you have towering branches in the sky. And if those branches and fruits are missing, then maybe there's something wrong with the seed, isn't it? Similarly yeah. here, if your iman is legit, bona fide, it should lead to the fruits of iman, the branches of iman, which are your actions, <laughs> necessarily has to follow. So... Hopefully, this is something we become cognizant of. This is the framework we adopt, is that we're monitoring, are my actions living up to my claim of email? That's and I think that, I think you have to kind of uh, be reflecting throughout your day. Yes. Even if you're doing something maybe passively, maybe be active about it. Be like, am I doing this to the best of my ability? Am I uh, doing this for the sake of Allah? Am I being honest for the sake of Allah? Um, am I strug the struggle? You know, in school, it can get hard sometimes. Yeah, you could be just kind of down, but then you, you know, you want to take a step back, be like, "I'm. This is like for the sake of Allah, I'm doing something for other people. For this, you know, you gotta make sure you, you gotta go back to the Amen, mm -hmm. and that helps you. That makes it a lot easier in the end. Facts, bro. Mashallah, mashallah. So this was this was the first question, y'all. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked, and that is, what iman? What action is the best? He said, iman in Allah. And then struggling in his path. So the man asks a second question. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, if I want to donate something, what's the best thing to give? Like I want to give something away for God. 
in the path of God? What's the best thing to give? The Prophet ﷺ said, well, if you want to give the best, then ideally the best thing to give is when you give from that which you love the most or that which cost the most. Now that's setting the bar a little bit high. Right. Guys, but I really like, and this is the last point I'm going to make today and then inshallah we're done with our session. You guys, I hope in this, the remaining time that I have, I can inspire you to appreciate the point that I'm about to make and that is, I hope to inspire myself and you that when it comes to Allah, I hope we can learn to give from the best and that we can learn to give the best. Whether it's our time, whether it's our energy, whether it's the stuff you give, you know? Because what tends to happen, we give to God leftovers and the real deal goes to like some dunya stuff, you know? Have you noticed that? Like, I'll give a 100%. few examples and then you can give your own. Um, and again, this is not meant to like, be negative or critical. It's just the reality we live in and we try to get better. Like when people give away their clothes, you know, and they're in the clothing, in the winter drive or, you know, in other ways, like sometimes those clothes are so worn out, so old that even the Salvation Army can't salvage it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like exactly. you haven't touched it since the Bush administration and they're like, oh, guys, <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. Oh, so, um, go ahead, go ahead, Bismillah. Like for example, fronts that work, you know, they'll go and get the top line shoes, top line clothes, top line car, whatever it is. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then they, when they're uh, at their local masjid, you know, oh, I'll put in like a dollar or something. The hand but, is shaking to yeah. sign the fund. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, maybe we got to reevaluate that. I think maybe just focus on uh, Allah first and then see whatever the other stuff can come later. Yeah, man. And, and you know, again, not, I'm not trying to throw Muslim families under the bus here, mm -hmm. but I, I'm trying to give examples that we can all relate to. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it will happen in the family where uh, somebody cooks so much and like, you know, after the family, like, it till they're in a food coma, they're like, oh my God, we got so much, so many leftovers. And like, there's no room in the fridge. Give it to the neighbors. Give it to the neighbors. No, 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 no. That intention has to be from the start, you know? Yeah. Like, and you, you know... When you study for MCATs, I know people who study for MCATs, man, their focus, a thunderstorm could be erupting outside, but they're like iron, laser sharp <laughs> focus. Same person studying, reading Quran, a little vibration of the phone, two rooms away. They're they like, gotta oh go God, check. I haven't talked to Lulu in like three days. And like, I gotta catch <laughs> No, I agree. Um, and I think that's something I, we all could work on. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I, and you know, it, this especially happens at night. I don't know, men love, forgive me. This is something that, again, I'm giving you this framework so we can start evaluating, mm -hmm. monitoring our actions. At night, when you're, when you're done with work and you want to just decompress and chillax, right? And you still have your mental energy and alertness and you're like, oh my God, my favorite show is on. I got to catch mm -hmm. New Amsterdam. And now after you binge watch that show for like, hour or two and now that you're dead tired then you're like oh my god i haven't created a show so the worst portion of your attention and energy now is gonna go to god right and your last prayer of the day you know what the clothes we give sometimes in donation and charity were those clothes given to us would be offended and the attention we give to allah were that attention given to us we would be offended so right. you love for Allah what you love for yourself. SubhanAllah. You love for others what you love for yourself. How, how much more so Allah? SubhanAllah. So I, I really, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to speak to myself um, that I hope, inshallah, we can think like that. You, you know, you ever heard of this famous saying, al asha uqabla al isha uh, No, I don't think. Yeah, it, maybe this is, I mean, obviously the Egyptian slang is like, you know, on a different <laughs> planet. So, al asha qabla al isha. Asha is a dinner. Oh, the dinner before Salat al isha. Dinner before isha. So this was like almost like a prophetic saying that if food is served, then go get your food and then do the prayer. Why? I think. Uh, what do you think? If you're exhausted Connected to our topic, see if you can. I mean, the best thing when you say that, what I think of is Ramadan when we're fasting all day, and it's maghrib. Yeah. And you know, you're so thirsty, your stomach is growling. I think uh, the sunnah is to drink some water, 
have some bala and then go pray. That's right. You know, so I think that's the, the kind of translates into what you were saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know? because, because the you want to have always, your energy. You don't want to yes, be thinking about energy. food while you're talking to Allah. There you go. Thank you. You want to give your pure attention. You don't want to be mentally divided and tied down. Thinking of baklava in your in your head when you're fo- trying to be fo- should be focusing on Fatiha. You know. You know, Abdullah ibn Umar, it is narrated about him in the Mu'ta Imam Malik that food would be served. And because his house was like very close to the masjid, he, you could hear the Imam reciting Fatiha or the Mu'addin saying, Allahu Akbar, aqi, aqi, you know, wa aqim is salah and so on and so forth. And he's still sitting down eating dinner and not joining the Jama'ah prayer. Yeah. Why? Because of this hadith right here, Al-Asha'u Qabla Al-Isha, take care of your biological needs. So then you can focus on your spiritual needs, you know? Yeah, I so, think that's uh, important. Facts, man. So I, a couple couple comments have come in. Um, yeah. Jihad was saying... Yeah, saw, go ahead, Bismillah. I saw Jihad um, said, A man is being loyal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even during times of hardship. If you have your trust in Allah and do your part as a Muslim, you will succeed and grow. And uh, mm. I, I want to thank Jihad for this nasih because I... Uh, I think we see this too often where we, when we're struggling, sometimes turn our back away from our spiritual uh-huh. needs and focus on the material needs and our, what, what struggle we're going through. And uh, yeah. I think that's, you know, I think it should be the other way. When yeah. you're in a struggle, you should even turn to Allah even more uh-huh. and seek for help. SubhanAllah. And that's how the Prophet was. When he was struck with difficulty, he would rush to prayer. We rush away from prayer. Allah will protect us. Mm-hmm. And uh, then Amr said something. Um, the examples are relatable and having a strong iman makes you uncomfortable in certain situations. Yes. And that's where, that's where it counts. Um, what else are we seeing from folks here? Sister Nadia. It's so heartbreaking to see how we treat those less fortunate than us. Wash those clothes, iron them, and fold them. You don't give gifts and garbage bags. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> mashallah, mashallah. Barakallah. Thank you guys for sharing your beautiful thoughts um, and your perspective. Uh, Abdul Rahman, Abdul Rahim, AR squared. Mashallah. <laughs> yeah, thank I you really, for having me. Zakla khairan. I really appreciate you coming. Hopefully, this is not the last time. And yeah. uh, I hope, inshallah, we can meet in person soon. Inshallah, inshallah. Barakallah feek. Best wishes in your education. And uh, inshallah, I'll see you guys. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.